This is episode number 17 of the Expert Table Tennis Podcast with me, your host, Ben Larkham. Joining me on today's show is Adam Gittings. Adam has been a long-time follower of Expert Table Tennis. I always see him popping up on social media, liking things and, and commenting. And he actually sent me an email just over a year ago to introduce himself and tell me a bit more about his story and how he got into table tennis. About a week ago, Adam won double gold medals at the Sainsbury School Games. And that's kind of like his big breakthrough moment so far in his career. And I decided it would be a good idea to get him on the podcast to ask him about the kind of training and competitions he's been doing up to this point and how he managed to reach this level where he's competing so well in his class, which is class 11 in the disability side of table tennis. If you don't know much about disability table tennis, I get Adam to break down exactly how all that works. So you'll understand a lot more at the end of this show. And Adam's just got a great story to share. Table tennis has really changed his life. And yeah, he's got some great tips and stuff to to share with you as well. So I'm very glad to have Adam on the show. Let's get into the interview with Adam Gittings. Joining me on today's show is Adam Gittings, who is fresh from winning double gold at the Sainsbury's School Games. Hi, Adam. Hi, Ben. How are you? Yeah, doing very well. How are you doing? Yeah, uh, yeah, I'm good, thanks. You must be buzzing after that win. Yeah, yeah, it felt very good. So, so tell us about tell us about the event. This is your first School Games, is it? Yeah, this was. It were um, very good. Um, I got selected for the first time, and that felt really good. And I knew going into it a bit top seed, so I felt I did feel quite a bit of pressure, but. I was quite surprised how calm I felt, we all think. And yeah, it went a lot better than I thought. Right, so so you were the number one seed, so you were the player that everyone was trying to beat. Yeah. But you managed to come through and win the gold. Uh, yeah, I did, yeah. And which region were you representing? I was the northeast. Northeast, okay. Whereabouts are you based? Um, Doncaster. Doncaster, okay, cool. So, um, yeah, tell us about some of the matches. Was it all plain sailing or were they were they pretty tough? Um, no, t- um, the first day I quite struggled because it was my first tournament in two months. So um, to start off with, I felt quite a bit of pressure, I think, and it took me a while to get going. Uh, the first match I played, Ashley Ray, who I think he was the second seed, and I managed to beat him 3-1, but I had to grind through it. It was very, like, I made quite a few unforced errors and a lot of mistakes, so I was quite happy to get through that. Uh, the second match were against Scotland, which I won 3-0, and I thought I played okay, but again, I played, made quite a few unforced errors, and then um, against Northern Ireland, they didn't have a player from my class, so I got a walkover. And the final match at day were against um, Jordan McGarry at North East, and he beat me 3-2, 11-8 in fifth. So that, that was disappointing, but I played. I played better that game, but he played really well. Okay, so he's a player that. Have you played him before? Uh, I've played him twice, yeah, before. And normally you'd expect to win, would you? Yeah, yeah. I, I beat him both the other times, so I was hopeful that I would win him, but he played really well. Yeah. yeah, and then I think from reading a few articles, you then went went and beat him in the final of the individuals, yeah. Yeah, I beat him three one in the final, which felt really good. So you lost to him in the team event, but then when it came to kind of the big match final with the individuals, you managed to turn it around. Yeah, yeah. I, I think I'd got used... By that time, I'd played another two days, and I think that I got used to the venue. I thought, I think I got back into, like, playing how I played before, like, in the tournaments. Because um, I'd got, I got used to playing in tournaments again, so I felt like I was playing better against all the other players as well. And by the time I got to final, I was playing my best, and I think that's uh, the best, like, mentally I've gone into a match as well. As even though we were final, like I was quite nervous, I thought I handled it really well. Okay, so you managed to kind of get better as the tournament went on. You reckon? Yeah, that's how I felt. Yeah. Well, that's good. That's what you want, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. Cool. Well, congratulations for that. That's like obviously a really great win for you. Thank you. What it would be good to talk about is if we can just go all the way back to when you first started playing table tennis, how you got into it, and why you kind of chose table tennis to start playing. Uh, yeah. Um, the first first time I picked up a paddle when I was nine years old, I went to a youth club and, well, I was really shy at the time. And some one of the staff there said, asked me if I wanted to play table tennis. So I said, yeah, I'll give it a go. And as soon as I started playing, I loved it from start. And um, like the session lasted like an hour and a half. But there were other stuff there like pool and table football and playstations. But 
like I refused to to go off the table really I mean my, my dad was trying to move me off the table like go on well, let someone else have a go but I refused that and the youth club shut down when I I think I was 12 and I didn't really play for the next three years but I started playing football for the Doncaster disability team and I was doing quite well at that and I got trial at, um, it was like a Yorkshire disability sports day, but they had other sports as well as football and table tennis were one of them. So um, I tried that as well and I didn't really get into football, but I got into table tennis. So it was Sean Alvey, he like, kind of picked me up and I went along to his club and I started playing, which were really good. and. From there, I just got better. I started entering tournaments and, yeah, I, f- I fell in love with the sport, really. It were, I really enjoyed it. Cool. So how old were you when you kind of started taking the table tennis a bit more seriously then? Um, I was 15. 15. And you're 18 now? <coughs> yeah. Yeah. So you so you'd had about three years of, of kind of serious, competitive table tennis and training under your belt. Yeah. Um, despite playing it from when you were when you were a bit younger as well, but more just for fun. Yeah. Um, so you played football as well. Did you play that quite a bit or was that just kind of dabbling? Um, I took it I took it quite seriously, but I was never really brilliant. Really it? I just, it was more for something to do really. Okay. You at the Centre for School Games were, were in the Class 11 event. Is that what it's called? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Could you just explain kind of for those of us that don't, fully understand how disability table tennis works, how all the classes work, um, kind of what each class represents, and in particular the class that you're in. Yeah, uh, so there's, ele- there's 11 classes in the disability. Class 1 to 5 are for wheelchair athletes, but um, the ratings 1 to 5 are like how disabled you are, kind of, to put it. So like the class 1 athletes will have, usually have a worse disability than the class 5 athletes. Um, class 6 to 10s are like standing or physical difficulties and again like the lower your number like the higher disability you've got so like class six will be the highest disability and 10 will usually have like the lowest amount of physical and class 11 okay. which i'm in is uh, the learning difficulties so yeah basically that's for athletes who've got like a learning disability sure and if you don't mind me asking what's the learning disabilities that you struggle with um i've got autism but I've also got um, dyspraxia, which is actually a physical difficulty that affects mainly my coordination and my movement. Okay. And have you found that that's affected your, your table tennis quite a lot in your training, or are you able to find ways to overcome it? Um, it definitely affects me because, well, I've managed to overcome it a bit now, but there are some certain situations like where I've struggled with it, like I've struggled to cope, and it's definitely affected my concentration and how I play. Sure, yeah, because table tennis is, it is very tough mentally, isn't it, to be able to perform to your best, to to have that real focus and concentration. But do you find that the table tennis is, do you think, helping with, with that aspect? Uh, yeah, definitely. It's Since I started playing, I've like, my confidence has gone up a lot. Um, I'm a lot more outgoing and I've, um, yeah, I've managed, I've found that it's definitely helped a lot. Like, um, when I first started playing, if, someone asked me to do an interview like this I'd have said no I'd have just shied away from it but I feel like I've got the confidence now to do a lot more like with Bristol as well I mean three years ago I'd, I'd have never thought I'd like move out of my house or anything like that but now I'm down in Bristol yeah that's brilliant and we'll, we'll, we'll talk about Bristol a little bit later because I I'd, I'd want to get into that yeah. um so talk to us about kind of your class then class 11 yeah. What's it like? Where are you ranked in class eleven, and kind of who are some of the other players that you that you end up coming up against? Yeah, um, it's a very popular category. I mean, it's probably got the most players in it at tournaments usually. Um, I'm currently ranked second in the seniors. Um, the player number one, Adam Thompson. I've not beat him yet, but I have come close on quite a few occasions. But it's also tough because you get a lot of like unknown players coming to. A, uh, come into a tournament so like you're playing a lot of new players quite a lot of the time so that can be challenging as well sure so is there like a circuit that goes around the country of kind of like grand prix but for the the disabled table tennis ones uh, yeah they're the btt grand prix they're run by dave cochran and 
Um, yeah, they're always good events because they're like all all around the country. Like on the fourth of October, there's one in Holton, and we have them like at Bats. Uh, there's one coming up at Liverpool. Um, Ormsby had one last year, and yeah, there's a lot a lot going on in the year, which is good. Okay, great. So, so you've got one coming up in about three weeks' time, then. Yeah. And that would be will that be you versus the other Adam again? Um, it should be. Yeah. Is that is that pretty typical now with you two as as one and two? Yeah, all the time. All the finals seem to be me and Adam, unless one of us in there. Yeah. Okay. So if you're both there, you generally make it to the final. Yeah, most of the time. Yeah. And how close are you to to Adam Thompson? Um, uh, pretty close. I think. I think he is a better player, but. Um, I've got quite a awkward style that a lot of players struggle with. So on the day, um, I feel it could go either way. But no, I'd say he's a better player. But I, I do think I can beat him. And he's he's quite a bit older, is he? He's twenty six. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So he's got eight years on you. So hopefully, with a with a few more years of practice, you'll be able to catch him up quite quickly. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Cool. So. In those in those three years since you've started playing, you've managed to go from pretty much a beginner who's just played table tennis recreationally to, to all the way up to number two in Britain for your class. Yeah. Like, what's the secret? What were you doing? You must have been playing a lot of table tennis for you. Uh, yeah, and well, I, I always believe like if you work hard then and put like the hours in and the effort that the results will come. And I think that's the difference really between me and a lot of players. I mean, even they were bodied, I've got to quite a high standard. I mean, I've represent my county and that so I believe that like um my work ethic has kind of like been a lot stronger than other players so that's allowed me to catch catch up like quickly like for someone who's been playing like uh six seven years I feel like I've put in like like the three years that they put in at the beginning I think I've put a lot more in with them I feel like I've worked a lot harder in them three years than a lot of players have in like the six or seven years yeah, sure. So roughly how many days have you been training a week and what kind of things have you been doing? I assume you've been involved with the club. Um, yeah, I started at the Albert Premier Table Tennis Club and then I moved to Blitz, which is run by Paul Johnson. Um, yep. I go. I, I used to go there twice a week, but I've got a table at home, so I'd probably play about six days a week, I'd say. Okay, so you, you've been playing most days? Yeah. And what kind of what kind of practice have you been doing? Have you been working on a lot of drills? Have you been doing lots of matches? What's kind of like a, a typical training session for you? Uh, well, at, at the clubs, I'd usually um, do quite a few drills, um, quite a lot of match play, and yeah, um, whatever um, Paul suggests. Really, at home, I'd base I'd usually be working on the basics, so like forehands, backhands, pushing, and service practice mainly at home. Okay, so so making sure that you've you're really solid on all the all the basic fundamental stuff. Yeah. Like I haven't managed to see you play ever before, but what would you say were your strengths and your weaknesses to your game? I know you said you've got perhaps a bit of a, a difficult style to play. Uh yeah. Um kinda of like a character to slash block blocker and I've got quite a good solid push as well. So I think that if you're like for players to beat me, you have to be really consistent and like um, get the good, like get the good attacking shots on. Or I feel like I'm quite strong. Like like pushing out, I never really miss, and my block's quite strong as well. But I think my weakness really is opening up and maybe my footwork. You know that sounds very similar to how I used to play when I was 18 before I went off to to Grantham Academy. I was very good at pushing, blocking driving keeping the ball on the table winning off my opponent's errors and then I think now that you're you've moved to Bristol this will be the time where you'll be able to really work on maybe the the more attacking side of the game and then once you combine that together you should really see some some big improvements yeah that's definitely what I want to do improve my overall attacking game okay right so you have moved down to Bristol Academy which is you know, one of only a, a few table tennis academies in the country. When did you move down there? I moved on Sunday. Okay, and it's Tuesday today. So you've been there for a couple of days now. Yeah. Um, I believe you managed to get a practice session in yesterday for the first time. Um, yeah, I got two in actually. Um, I went, 
I went training with the academy squad, which was really good. We had a session there, and then uh, later in the day, I went down to civil service table tennis club, and I had quite a few hours down there practicing as well. Great. So, so tell us what it's like. Who are the coaches? Who are the other players <laughs> that are there? And um, yeah, how does it compare to to kind of the club set up you were at before? Um, it's a lot better because like over here you've got a good standard of players. I mean, not that the others were weak, but like the standard here is quite good, and they're all players who like want to be there. So, like they want to work hard and get the best results. Yeah. How's the um? How is the the kind of training going to work at Bristol? Do you know what the schedule is going to be like? Kind of because you're going to be studying and training at the same time, aren't you? Um, yeah. So I think it's going to be mainly studying in the morning and then training in the afternoon or something like that. Okay. And you'll be able to kind of do some competing maybe in a local league or something? Um, yeah, hopefully I'm going to try and get into the Bristol League and obviously play quite a lot of tournaments while I'm here as well. Nice. And are there any, uh, there must be a few other guys that have started this year that are new as well? Um, yeah, I think so. I think I'm probably one of the only ones who's like moved down, but there are a few new starters, I think, as well. Okay, so so name a few of the players that are at Bristol currently, because I haven't got a clue who's there. Uh, there's, I'm not really sure on too many of the names. There's um, Christoph, uh, Rajan Waterman. Um, who else is there? Yeah, Raj is, Raj is another disability player, isn't he? Yeah. Which class is Raj in? He's class 10. Okay, and he's he's one of the, he does all the international stuff as well, doesn't he? Uh, yeah, he does, yeah. Yeah, so I feel like there's been... Is there quite a history of um, the top disabled athletes going to Bristol? Um, yeah, I think Will Baylor came here. Um, who else was? Um, we had Lee Wilkinson and Craig Allen a few years ago. They're also disability athletes. Yeah, so it seems like this is a good place for you to go if you are looking to take that next step up. Uh, yeah, definitely. We've had um, some top like able body ones as well, like Darius Knight, Ray, Tom Maynard and Dean Kunde they've all been here as well great it'd be good to talk about what your what your goals are kind of you're going to be at bristol for two years aren't you yeah yeah and you're you're studying for a hnd in sports science uh yes what next that's science yeah great so you've got two years at bristol now what are your hopes for the end of those two years what are you hoping to achieve um well i want to come out with um good qualifications as well but in table tennis terms i want to I want to improve my overall game, like get my attacking shots better and um, as I said, my footwork as well. But um, I'd like to get up to number one in the country and hopefully get into one of the GB squads. Great. And are there are there a kind of any big international tournaments that you're that you're aiming for? Um, not at the moment, no, because I'm not really in a GB squad, but I'd hope to get picked for one, hopefully. Um up on like in the short term hopefully so sure so so the aim is very much like to to work hard to get yourself into that gb team of players yeah definitely yeah yeah and um will you be competing in the able-bodied tournaments as well uh yeah definitely i'm hoping to play a few grand prix this year um i think i'm playing i'm definitely gonna play bristol Uh, i'm hoping probably nottingham as well uh doncaster because there's one there this year and I think they take a squad to London as well, so yeah, I'm hoping to play quite a few Grand Prix and get my ranking up in the able-bodied seniors as well. Yeah, yeah, I looked up your ranking. You're currently 599, I think, so just about on the top 600 ranking list. Yeah, yeah. So I think if you're getting in the training and the and the practice at Bristol and playing all these tournaments, I would expect that that would go up pretty quickly over the next few years. Hopefully, yeah. Cool. Yeah, after after you're you're done at Bristol, the way these things work, and this is the same as what I did in Grantham, is that you have the option to then go on to to uni and kind of top up the the HND into a degree, don't you? Yeah. Is that what you're planning on doing? Um, that's the plan. Yeah. Well, I say I'll say I'll be next two years ago, and then yeah, it's um probably going like if I enjoy it, I'll probably go somewhere like Bristol or Gloucestershire, but uh, you never know. Yeah, it's still got a bit of time to decide, but are you thinking that, like, what kind of career are you looking at going into long term? Are you hoping to be able to, to stick to something in table tennis, or are you thinking of going outside of table tennis? Um, yeah, I'd, I'd love to do something in table tennis, but 
if not, it'd definitely be something sport based. So like uh, physiotherapy, nutrition, something like that. So I definitely, sure. want, definitely want to stick to something based on some sort of sport. Great. Well, that sounds like a good plan. Yeah. So something that I'm trying to revive on this podcast is making sure I ask every guest to to give us a top tip that's perhaps something that's helped them particularly to improve their level or something that they're they're really working hard to improve at the moment. Do you have a top tip for us, Adam? Um, yeah. When I were in the final um, at the school games, um, I, well, I were trying quite a few different mentalities to approach games like, at the tournament. So um, what I were telling myself here is, because usually what I'd do is I'd be like, uh, come on, let's, let's beat this player. Let's have him. But instead, um, I went in thinking like, uh, come on, we've got a job to do. Let's do our job and like focus on every point. And I felt that mentally I were a lot more stable um, whilst I was playing. So I didn't I didn't lose my head nowhere near as much because if I was thinking like let's have this player, then when you miss a lot, um, I used to get quite angry and like quite tense. But because I was focusing on like the job I had to do, then I felt that mentally I was a lot more stable because I was focusing on every point like focusing on what I had to do in each point instead of focusing on the player. Okay, yeah, that, that's actually that's actually something really interesting to talk about is how do you mentally prepare yourself for matches? Do you, because it sounds like what you're saying there is that you're trying to remove some of the emotion from what you're, from what you're feeling, is that right? Yeah, that's right. So just trying to treat it as we've got a job to do, we've got to win these points, win these games, we've got to be thinking just tactically being aware of what what's going to get the best result as opposed to getting too too emotionally involved in the game yeah i think it's um helped like keep my head clear as well because it's like if you think of um what you've had what the job is that you've got to do you're not focusing on like the result of the like the end result of the match yeah so, so you're kind of breaking it down a bit more as well instead of thinking about just winning and losing the whole match yeah oh that's really helpful is that is that something that you've struggled with before? Is is getting too emotional in matches or finding that that your head's gone and things like that? Yeah, I think that's lost me quite a few points in the past. Yeah, because that is something that I, from my experience, everyone struggles with to an extent. Is either getting getting too tense, too agitated, getting really angry when you're making mistakes. But you find that this strategy of just going into it as if it's almost like a job, and you've just got to you've just got to remove the emotional bit and just get to work really helps with that yeah i think it does yeah oh that's good that's a really great tip thanks adam yeah. cool so thank you very much for coming on the show it's been good talking to you yeah. i know that um you are quite active on social media sharing results and things aren't you yeah can you give us um some of the details for for where you are on twitter and facebook and stuff um yeah um i've got a page on facebook that's um just adam gittins uh, that should be fun um my Twitter is at Adam Gittins TT, and my Instagram's also the same. And you've got a YouTube channel as well, I saw. Um, yeah, I have. I'm not too sure of your URL, but uh, the channel's just called Adam Gittins. So if you type it into yeah. YouTube, you should see some of the videos, and that should link you to the channel. And is that is that something that you do quite often? Is filming filming your matches? Um, yeah, I haven't. Do- I haven't had a chance to do it as much, like because. I've just had like the school games and I didn't really want to film there, but um, I'm trying to do that more, yeah. So hopefully there'll be a lot more content on there. Yeah, maybe get some filming of of the training at Bristol as well and then upload that for people to see. Yeah, definitely, yeah. Right, well, it's been great talking to you. I assume, are you training today as well? Uh, Yeah, half four. Yep, so you've got training this afternoon, so good luck with that. It's going to be a really fun two years for you, I reckon. Yeah, definitely, yeah. So I'm going to keep following your progress and hopefully you'll be able to just keep making those steps forward and get yourself up to, to number one in the in the country. Yeah, that's the aim, yeah. That's the aim. Yeah. Brilliant. Well, good luck, Adam. It's been great talking to you. Great. Thank, thanks for having us on the show. Yeah, that's cool. I'll see you, I'll see you soon. Okay, see you. Cheers, mate. Bye. Bye. A big thanks going out to Adam for joining me on this episode of the podcast. It was brilliant to talk to him and just to hear a bit more about his story and what a positive impact table tennis has had on his life and his self-confidence. So really great stuff, Adam. Definitely keep keep up what you're doing. I really hope that you get on well at Bristol and that your table tennis continues to, to go up and up and that you manage to achieve everything that you want to. 
What I want to draw out from that interview is all to do with how Adam has developed his style and the kind of things that he's going to be working on now because I think it's something that that comes up for a lot of people. Adam has developed a very consistent game which is a great place to start. He's able to push well, he can block, he can counter hit, he can keep the ball on the table which is going to win him points. And back when I was a junior I had a very similar game. I was used to blocking, pushing, touching, trying to stop my opponent from attacking and winning a lot of my points off of their mistakes. And that's a great way to start. But in the modern game of table tennis, there comes a point where that just kind of stops working because once players get get that next level up and they're not making mistakes and they're playing really aggressive table tennis, you then really need to have the ability to go on the offensive yourself. You can't just win enough points against good players by keeping it on. And that's when you really need to get your head down and do the practice to make sure that you're able to play these high quality aggressive shots and be consistent and accurate with them. And I guess that, from the sounds of it, is what Adam's going to be focusing on now that he's at Bristol. He's got the time, he's got the coaching, he'll have the practice partners to be able to really make sure that that his offensive side of the game is as good as his defence. So I'm really looking forward to seeing how Adam gets on. I'm sure he's going to have loads of great Adam versus Adam matches coming up in the next season or two as he goes head to head with the current British number one, Adam Thompson. And I really wish him the best of luck. I, I know that Adam is putting a lot into this and I hope that he's able to to achieve that number one spot and get himself into the Team GB team as well because that would just be brilliant. Thank you so much for listening to the show. If you enjoyed this one, please share it with your friends. You can use Facebook, Twitter, all of those things. Links are very simple to use, especially if you're listening on iTunes. This podcast is available to download from the iTunes store and you can subscribe on there. And I would also really appreciate it if you could leave us a review just to to help the podcast move up the rankings. And I don't know how it works, but it's something like that. I'll be back next Friday. My guest is Chris Main, who is the coach of a club up in Scotland. So I'll be talking to Chris, picking his brains about coaching and also talking a bit more about the development side of the sport. So we've got Chris Main coming next week. Thank you very much for listening to this episode of the Expert Table Centers podcast. I've been Ben Larkham and I will see you in a week's time.